So I'm here with the uh, Autodesk folks. Uh, could you uh, introduce yourselves to, to the viewers? I'm Shelly Mustafa. I'm uh, one of the developers working on Project Draw at uh, Autodesk Labs. I'm David Falk. I'm the other developer working on Project Draw at Autodesk Labs. Cool. Yeah. What's Project Draw? So Project Draw is a vector-based diagramming product based completely on the web and uh, it's one of the several projects uh, within Autodesk Labs. There are several other and we are constantly exploring ways of, uh, uh, of uh, new ways of handling design and Project Draw is just one of those experiments or at this point of time a full-fledged uh, uh, effort towards doing vector-based editing in the browser, completely within the browser. We like to say it's zero client too, I don't know if that's... <laughs> Term, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's one that's good. It's thrown the labs a lot. Area. There's no plugins necessary for this. It's all yeah. totally browser based. Yeah, cool. So uh, when you do this kind of vector stuff in the browser, there's you know SVG, there's mm -hmm. VML, ancient stuff in IE. Mm -hmm. Like there's Canvas to do non-vectory but drawing yeah. stuff. How do you actually get this to work in the in the browser, cross so, browser? Yeah. So so uh, one of the that was one of the challenges when we were doing Project Draw was that uh, there was a constant chatter about whether we should be using uh, Ajax-based approaches, whether we should be using Flash, Flash. and there's, there's Silverlight up there. So what we decided to do was play it safe and we created an abstraction layer, which utilizes the browser's uh, default rendering technology, which in case of IE is VML, in case of Firefox, S, uh, Opera, and Safari is SVG. Yeah, we actually started out with IE. Yes. So okay. essentially, the, the benefit of that abstraction layer is that now at this point of time, we can easily port it to other future technologies which might come in. For example, Silverlight. Okay. And, uh, uh, and, and the, the way it turns out that rendering layer paid, uh, the abstraction layer paid off pretty well for us because we first did IE, and within a weekend, we were able to port it to Firefox. Oh, cool! So, because uh, most of the most of the core uh, operations at the higher level are abstracted out, and only the core, only the the basic rendering has to be delegated out to VML or SVG right. layers. And as you can imagine, because it's cross browser, we want it to be cross browser. We have VML, to SVG, and back. Yeah. And vice versa on the server side too. So, and we all we also. Uh, use SVG to, to produce the rasterizations of uh, the diagrams too, so oh, okay. a lot of stuff going on in the background with the XML. Yeah, yeah so there's the client-side layer which actually does the diagramming and the rendering, but there's the back-end layer which does the translation and the rasterization and, and user session management. Oh, okay. Interesting. Right. So VML, I doubt Microsoft has touched that in uh, quite a few years. How is it for like performance and and everything else. It's it's not bad. It's, it's great, uh, you know it's optimized obviously for IE and VML is used in several other places. For example, you know Word. I don't know if they still the, the recent versions of Microsoft Office still use VML, but the original versions were using VML. Is, and, yeah. yeah. So so it's it's fairly optimized, and I think the performance is pretty comparable to what is available in other browsers. Uh, in fact, for certain operations, it might even be faster. Uh, it is a very compact language. It is more compact than SVG, so in fact that that helps reduce the downsize. Okay. And uh, in terms of the general uh, of the, the, the general abilities of VML, they are fairly isomorphic with SVG. So it it was very uh, it was quite easy actually to develop uh, abstraction layer because any construct available in SVG there was. Uh, most of the time, there was an equivalent construct available in VML. In, in some cases, we even found it easier to work with VML. Yeah. <laughs> really? Believe yeah. it or not, yeah. Yes. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah some of the, some of the uh, first, for example, support for formulas and handles is built in mm -hmm. um, in VML. In SVG, we had to construct something like that okay. uh, so that you can actually manipulate the shape after, the, after it has been drawn on the canvas. Cool. So you built this abstraction layer. Would it have helped you if something like Gears already kind of had an abstraction across these different things, or Absolutely. did you see value there? Or, or yeah. Uh, if it existed, yeah, we would definitely would have used it. Right. right. Well, Gears present. itself is abstraction. Uh, obviously, you know, when we use a Gears API, we don't care whether we, which browser we are working with, and yeah. so that, that that already itself helps. So uh, from that perspective, yeah, I think. Uh, it got us 90% of the way. When we started using Gears, our motivation for uh, using Gears was, in fact, a couple of people came back and said, this is great, but it's only great until I 
unplug the cable and try to get on a plane. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so, so this was from actual users that yes. wanted it? Yeah. Okay. So we, we try to be really religious about what we do with, with Draw, and we still try to act like a small startup, and we, we just work on the features that people want. And through this discussion groups and emails and blog mm -hmm. traffic, we really try to rank what people want and go for it. And it just so happened, it was, it was great uh, great timing that Gears came about, Interesting. And, and people were really wanting to go offline with our stuff, so it worked out perfectly. Yeah, so uh, when, when the requests started coming in, we, we sat down and we said, okay, uh, it is doable since most of our resources are, all of our used resources are cacheable. Uh, we just, so we sat down and we said, what operations can we actually take offline? Because there are certain operations we definitely cannot, such as rasterization. Right, yeah. But there are, uh, most of the time, people do not need rasterization until they're finally ready to export this out into some other uh, format, or they need to embed this into, a, for example, some kind of a document. Okay, so, so when they're offline, they you just gray out, you disable the ability right. to export. Yeah, yeah. we take those, we take those menu items out. Totally. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, but you can still do everything which you can do in an online version in terms of drawing capabilities. You and can still save your right. You can still save the work into the into the uh, gears database. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then we started looking at the gears API, and we said, okay, what pieces of the API do we need to support each of these operations? So for for caching all the all the shape objects into the local we use the managed resource, uh, is that a managed resource mm -hmm. pool? Yeah. Right. And then we decided, you know, we'll use the database functionality to be able to sort of store the data locally as people are saving their files and also to sync the files back, uh, you know, when we get get online and uh, that kind of stuff. Cool. We're, we're not using the worker pools in this current version, but okay. we're going to the next release to speed it up. Okay. We wanted to keep it as plain vanilla as possible mm -hmm. just to get get it out there and feedback and you know, we've got a lot of great feedback right. on, on, on you know, people using it offline. Uh, it's it's a little bit slow right now and IE takes about a minute to two minutes to download a, a reasonable amount of files yeah. um, and Firefox is a little bit slower but I think we can speed it up considerably. So do you explicitly go offline before you get on a plane? Yeah, yeah okay. it's totally modal right now and okay. you know, the, the goal many releases for now would be totally modeless so you wouldn't even know that things are going on in the background, and, and that, so when you unplug or you know, the power goes off or your connection gets dropped, uh, everything will be on your machine. That's that's, that's my term. vision mm -hmm. long term. Yeah, yeah cool. Model is a lot easier uh, the first time through the gates. So. Yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. Start small. Yeah. So um, you talked about like disabling menu items and things like that. Do you have like a separate app that you use for when it's offline, or is it just one app that checks? to know whether it's online or offline, it does the right thing. Uh, I, I, we do something similar to what the, the Zoho guys were talking about. We just, we just make an Ajax call and we ping a file on the server. If we can't ping that, then we assume that we're offline. Okay. So, and that's what that pretty well. It, we assume that we're disconnected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we, I also set a flag in the database when we're offline in, in, in Gears parlance. But yeah. <laughs> um, so, this, so it's disconnected and offline. Right. That's, those those are the things that you have to wrap your head around when you're developing these these types of applications. <laughs> yeah. you know, there's there's a lot of different uh, uh, combinations that you have to test for. Yeah. But that's one of the things that would be great if Gears provided someday would be that, that ability to tell to tell when you're disconnected from the net and when you're not. Right. So yeah. That'd be that'd, that'd be ideal. Cool. So um, if the developers using Gears for the first time, what were some of the challenges, surprises, good things, whatever from building this? Uh, it was, I was really surprised with the, the documentation and the, and the samples. They were really easy to use, okay. uh, which is not something that you, you uh, normally expect from an open source project. <laughs> Sometimes it takes a few weeks to get, you know, <laughs> yeah. get these things up and running. And, uh, I remember the first couple times I tried uh, doing Maven yeah. <laughs> you know, you know, five years ago or four yeah. years ago. And, you know, I, I don't think I ever got another running, but with Gears, I was up and running it in a day. So yeah. I had the samples running, and then uh, a large part of the work was just setting up, creating the database schema that was similar to our server side database schema, right. and and deciding what stays and what goes, uh, you know, online and offline, yeah. and figuring out a way to uh, push our XML, whether it be VML, SVG, mm -hmm. into the client side database. Okay. What what would it, uh, what would help is if there was some sort of a performance tool 
for years, which would show us exactly what operations are happening. Because okay. especially when you're trying to go offline, there's there's this lag, and you're not quite sure whether it is because of what something years is doing, or is it because of the data and okay. the size of the data. Okay. So it would be interesting to see what data is being pulled and how long each file is taking, and where you can make optimizations and such. Right. So maybe like we could add a tap to Firebug. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah, actually, that's what we're saying. Yeah. We were just talking about that yesterday. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and that would that would definitely help us optimize. Uh, performance on here. Cool, cool. So we have Steve Solders, who's the, the Yahoo performance guru guy, and now works at Google. He's okay. the guy that did Y slow. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. He that a lot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I'll bug him to add this to, uh, yeah. <laughs> to, add this to Firebug. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing that was uh, that we are exploring right now is that once you have gone offline once and you try to go offline again, at this point of time, we are still bringing back all the resources. And, okay. and we are trying to work through a delta approach where you can say, I am you know, the, uh, version X, and the last time I went offline, I was version X minus two, yeah. so right. just get me the deltas yeah. from that. So maybe there might be possibly some extensions to the manifest where you can say, here's the baseline. If you already have the baseline, here are the deltas. Uh, right. There's been some discussions in, in, the, in the discussion group about that topic, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and yeah. So how do you handle syncing for for all of this stuff? For, right now, we create a, a dynamic manifest so on, on the okay. server side. So when the use when the users online and they they do certain functions, like for example, they, they create uh, an image or they create um, a, a new diagram, we take a a template of the manifest that. The, of the files that we always know we're going to we're, we're going to need offline, and then we just add to that using JSON. So, yeah. And then we cool. And the dynamic manifest is for the user files. The user files only. Yeah. So, so there's obviously the, the the baseline of the application itself, but then there are files which users have created, which we also need to pull right. down. For those, okay. we dynamically add to the manifest entries. So the, the next sound. release or two, we'll have experimenting with multiple stores. Okay. And. and and trying that out, so, okay. so we'll have the, the base store and then the dynamics uh, documents, uh, the, you know, the file, the files going in, in the, the second store. So hopefully. <laughs> right, right. Well, thanks so much for coming in to chat with us about this. Yep. Thank You're you. quite welcome. Thank yeah. you for having us. Cheers. <laughs>